Hi Leo, welcome to your April 2017 love reading. It's Rena here. So before I lay out the cards, I just wanted to say a couple things about some, well, it's basically about the transit of Venus retrograding. First in your ninth house, which could mean that if you met anybody on previous travels, you may be hearing from them if they're from a different culture, because the ninth house can also represent that, if they're from a university. And then it goes back into your eighth house. Now, this may be about issues surrounding intimacy, sex versus love, true love. Maybe you're wondering, is this really a sex thing? You know, I met this person in the Bahamas. I mean, was it just because we were, you know, soaking up those ocean breezes that our animal nature's got the best of us, and now we're um, in this, the heat of the moment, but I'm not sure if we really love each other, and then you're going to be kind of assessing that. That could be what's happening in terms of your love life. So, interesting stuff. Okay, so very interesting. You've gotten that Hierophant card at least one other time in the same position. This is a card that is, in terms of signs, connected to Taurus. So if you know any Tauruses in your life, if you have any in your life, could be dealing with them. But it's a card that deals with issues surrounding traditional values. And for a love reading, marriage would be a big one. And, you know, marriage, I guess you would say marriage with the signed contract, not just shacking up. <laughs> so you may be thinking about that. Maybe you're in a relationship with somebody and they won't think of that. They don't want to get married for instance, and you're feeling like perhaps the relationship is not as um, happy as you want it to be because you feel like if they loved you enough, they would commit to this relationship on that level. And it might be a source of pride for you, Leo, because you're measuring their willingness to get married against, you know, whether or not they care about you to a certain degree. And so you might be feeling a little bit dissed. For some of you, this could be about a current marriage that you're in, or to some degree, maybe associated with that is your conditioning, religious conditioning growing up. So if you were told that marriage is, <laughs> I was going to say between a man and a woman, but that's, it wasn't, that wasn't where I was going with it. Um, I was thinking more of a, if you're told that getting divorced is a sin, if you were told that you have to get married, in order to have children and, and these kind of things. Maybe you're pregnant and, and you don't want to get married, you know, there could be a million different permutations. But for some reason, marriage is coming up for you. Either you want it or you don't want it. <laughs> and, um, or a Taurus person. Now, obviously this is a general reading, so some of these cards may not really apply to you. And uh, just t take what you can from the cards that I have drawn in the past position. 
we have the Seven of Wands. So this is a defensive posture. Maybe you have stood up for yourself finally. Maybe you were being treated like a doormat in a marriage. And you're not sure if you want to remain there. The person could be also of a fire, uh, I was going to say temperament, but a sign, a fire sign, fellow Leo, Aries or Sag, or somewhat prominent in, in their chart so that they have a very volatile, you know, persona, nature, emotional nature. But this, if there's a, if you're in a relationship with somebody, where you always feel like you have to explain yourself or defend yourself, then it's on you to decide if you're going to put up with that nonsense because that is no way to live. Now, obviously, some people may have children and that kind of changes things a little bit. It's not just about you, and I get that. But even in those situations, I would ask you, what it benefits your child or your children to see their mother or their father being talked down to or worse and if you think that would be if that's healthy for their future because that might not be and so the issue of these traditions like marriage come up because we have to weigh it against our own treatment, what, how we're being treated and how we're being valued. And if it's not there, then it's hard to justify sticking around for more of the same. What is happening right now is connected to the Three of Cups. So this could mean that the partner is an alcoholic. In other words, drinking too much, partying too much. Maybe they are seeing other people. That's why there's multiple people here. And so it's not just one issue. They may, maybe they get abusive when they drink and they're not that way other times. And so you fool yourself and thinking, well, it's only when they get drunk. And it's like they're getting drunk every other night. Or even maybe it's just on the weekends that they're getting drunk. But that might want to be a deal breaker because that's still not okay. It's dysfunctional and you have to dread, you know, every weekend <clears throat> you know not necessarily a good thing at all this card can also mean that you are starting to kind of break away from your own solitude maybe you've been isolating yourself and maybe you're contacting your friends again maybe part of the abusive situation was that the other person try to discourage you from contacting your friends and family. And so you allowed that person to control you and now you've gotten to the point where you don't want to you don't want to be with this person. So you're starting to reestablish regular contact with your friends and family. In some cases, I think that this is the best way of describing it. I will say that with the 3 of cups um, sometimes it's saying that you place too much importance on other people. And so maybe that's um, what the, the Hierophant is say, saying too, is that are you going to think for yourself or are you going to allow other people's opinions of your situation? Now, these could be religious opinions. These could be, you know, socially conditioned opinions. People from your culture telling you that this is right or this is wrong. And you might get both. You might get people that say, this is how it is, and this is you have to deal with it. Or people saying, about any relationship, you can do better, but there may be relationships that are healthy that they say that. So consulting other people's opinion can be tricky because you're dealing with their conditioning. So sometimes when I see that card, I feel like friends are interfering with the person's, you know, sense of judgment and that it's not really a good thing. Or it's not really a sense of judgment, but their, the friend's opinion is affecting 
the person who's actually in the relationship and they're being influenced by that. The higher message is the devil card. I really think that some of you are dealing with somebody who has an addiction. I feel like Pat Robertson from the 700 Club. But that's really what I feel like that um, with the Three of Cups. And so what this card is saying as a spiritual message is that you can't fix this alone. This isn't about if only you do something better that this person is going to change. They have an addiction and that's on them. And, that the, and also, I think the devil card is saying that until they get that problem under control, there's everything else is totally up in the air. And this is one of the things, the, the devil card can also deal with sexual addiction. So if you have womanizing, you have somebody who has a hard time being faithful. It could be a sexual addiction and it's not about you being inadequate that's probably what the social the spiritual message is telling you don't take it personally that this is happening because it's not about you it's about their shortcomings and their psychological issues this could also involve a capricorn individual so perhaps the person involved is a capricorn it's interesting that the Hierophant is associated with Taurus because I could see it totally being Capricorn. Capricorn is a sign that is associated with, um, you know, the structure in society because of Saturn. So, and, and that's what um, the Devil card is connected to Saturn because Saturn is a ruler of Capricorn. By the way, I wouldn't be surprised if for some of you, this is also talking about you not being able to or wanting to move on because you have a very comfortable life with this person. Maybe you are a little bit too materialistic or into the comfort or the status of the life that you're being provided. Maybe, maybe there is like one of these things that's happening where it's almost like and I don't want to say, gosh, people, you know, they jump all over me. If I even suggest like gold dinging, what I mean is that it happens. Don't tell me it doesn't happen. And I, hey, it could happen with both genders too. But what I'm saying is that sometimes, just like people are affected by how people look, sometimes they're affected by how somebody's bank statement looks like. And they really... They or their status, you know, they have a high-powered job, or they, they are, you know, somebody who is very important, you know, air quotes, whatever. If you married for money, and you get into that situation, you may have found yourself very lonely, and you're thinking, wow, you know, now I'm stuck in this loveless marriage and yet you find it hard to break free because the benefits are so great. What crosses you is the Sun card. So the Sun card is your card. You may have met somebody that you have fallen in love with, but because of extenuating circumstances, it cannot move forward. But the Sun card, even in a challenge position, is a very positive card, Leo. And because it's your ruler, um, I, I think what it's trying to suggest in its own way is that once you get your situation situated, you will be able to see some of the blockages kind of melt away and your life will move forward. And if you have fallen in love with somebody, that can occur. Now this could also be saying that you want this very badly in your life, but you have other obligations or other loose ends that you have to tie up before you can, you know, the universe can bring that to you. So it's kind of like a similar thing, I suppose. And the 
advice or what's coming in is the Queen of Swords. So this is about you not allowing your emotional nature, and yes, the fire signs are emotional, not in the same way as the water signs, but they do get very involved with, um, their feelings can get in the way sometimes. It, you know, they run very hot. And so you have to be cool as a cucumber in whatever situation you're dealing with so that you, you need to marshal your forces, but you're not losing that intuitive part of yourself. That's what the feminine energy, the divine feminine of the queen is. You're, you're not like just shutting out to your emotions, but you're getting control of them. You're making them logical. So that you can, and, and this is important if, you've, if you're in love with somebody who is not good for you. You have to be able to see that. I, I call it like the Whitney Houston syndrome because she was a, a Leo. And a lot of people thought that Bobby Brown was really bad for her. And, and that her life took a nosedive when she got with him. And... Whether that's true or not, I mean, everybody's responsible for themselves, obviously. But the point is that Leo is a fixed sign. It's a fire sign. You're very passionate about life. And you can get very stubborn when somebody, when people try to tell you that you're doing the wrong thing. So you, you it's not that you're prone to uh, love relationships that do not work out. It's not that you are vulnerable to them, but maybe in some cases you are because you have so much pride and you don't like to admit that you've made a mistake. And also you are very loyal. So you don't just throw people out. You don't kick them to the curb the first time that they do something even against you, like, like um, cheating. You're not going to necessarily do that. And part of it is your pride though because you don't want people to know how much they've hurt you and how much you feel like your confidence has been, you know, taken down a peg. And the Queen of Swords is asking you to just get a hold of everything so that you can function properly and make the decisions that you need to make. The outcome is the Nine of Wands and this is about being very protective, self-protective. So if you, for instance, if you're with somebody who is actually abusive in some way, you may be like getting all your ducks lined up in a row so that you can have a smooth exit from a marriage and there's no like complications. But it can also mean that you are just emotionally walling yourself in, but not necessarily in a bad way, just in a way so that you can be self-contained and that you don't allow yourself to fall back into some kind of a compulsive relationship with somebody and, um, and allow them to control you or so you think they are. So in any case, Leo, I hope you enjoy this. If you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. Otherwise, have a great April. Bye.